And the next topic about gases in chemistry is going to be Boyle's law. And Boyle's law, of course, is very related to the ideal gas equation, PV equals NRT. With Boyle's law, we assumed, or Boyle assumed, what would be the relationship between P and V when T is constant. So the assumption is, let's say that the temperature remains constant, how does P and V relate to each other, the pressure and the volume of a gas? And really, the way you can look at it is take the ideal gas equation, make T a constant, of course, we know that R is a constant, and N, well, if we don't change the gas, if we don't add or take any gas out, we keep it in a closed container, so that N is also fixed, that N and R and T are all constants, so therefore we can say that P times V is equal to NRT, which is a constant, which means that the product of pressure times volume always remains constant. So if pressure goes up, volume goes down, pressure goes down, volume goes up, accordingly, so that the product of the two will always give you the exact same number. If that's true, we can then conclude that P1V1, the pressure and the volume of the gas in state one, must equal the pressure times the volume in a different state when we did something to it, like heating it up or cooling it down or whatever we did. We want, oh, wait a minute, no, no, we can't change the temperature. If we increase the pressure, decrease the pressure, what happens to the volume afterwards? Hmm, caught me on that one. So if we go to some basic algebra, where we take the equation y equals a constant divided by x, and we graph that, we get this kind of graph. And if we then write this equation like this instead, so this is the very same equation, that y times x equals a constant, again, these are the graphs we get. And for different constants, constant 1, constant 2, constant 3, the only thing that happens to the graph is that the graph will then change. It, it will go in a different location, but the general shape is the same. It's an inverse relationship between the pressure and the volume. So if y goes up, x goes down. If y goes down, x goes up, just like the pressure and the volume. So we, that means that we can have the exact same graph for a pressure versus volume. And again, depending upon what temperature we have the gas at, remember with Boyle's law, we don't change the temperature, then for different temperatures, we'll have a different curve. The shape of the curve will be the same, it'll just be in a different location. But again, the general relation between pressure and volume does not change. The result of that is we end up with this relationship between pressure and volume, which allows us to find the pressure or the volume in the second state, in the final state, when we know the initial state and one of those two variables. For example, what if we know that pressure one was 2.4 atmospheres and volume one was 6.4 liters? Now, we change the pressure to 3.8 atmospheres, so we increase the pressure, what will now be the new volume? And Boyle's law allows you to figure that out because we can take this equation and solve that equation for V2. So the first thing we do is we turn the equation around. So we have P2 V2 is equal to P1 V1. And now we divide both sides by P2. So when we do that, we get V2 is equal to P1 V1 divided by P2. And then all we have to do is put in there those three numbers. So P1 was 2.4 atmospheres. V1 was 6.4 liters. P2 is 3.8 atmospheres. And of course, logic would dictate that if we put more pressure on the gas, that the volume would therefore decrease. So let's find out. So we have 2.4 times 6.4, divide that by 3.8, and we get 4.04. .04. So 4.04 .04 liters, and that would be the new volume under the additional pressure. So that's what Boyle's law allows you to do. Later on, we're going to do a similar kind of problems, but instead of dividing it into various gas laws, which we'll talk about in the next several videos, we can say we can do all that from a single equation, PV equals NRT, and I'll show you how to simplify it in the end. But at least you should be familiar with Boyle's law in case you come up with it in your homework and you don't know how to do the problem. So this is how you take care of it when you want to use it in terms of Boyle's law.